These are 13 new shortcuts you requested in the comments, part six. So many great ideas like playing music on a HomePod when you arrive home, finding out how many events you have today, using an NFC tag to save the last location of your MagSafe battery pack, automatically creating an alarm based on your next morning's event, intercom yourself reminders, and a ton more. And I'm putting together all the request specific shortcuts videos in a playlist. That link is down in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button and let's get started. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do with these request videos going forward is build the shortcut. This way you can have the link and download it in the video description, and then we'll create automations that run those shortcuts. So let's create a new one. And this one is going to speak a reminder on the HomePod every day. Now this person was trying to use the set playback destination and spoken audio, but if you want your HomePod to speak a reminder every day, you're actually gonna to wanna to search for the intercom action. Using the intercom action, now you can type in a custom message like, pick up the kids, and you can play this on all the HomePods throughout the house, or choose a specific HomePod. I'm gonna tap where it says Robles Home. Yes, I do have a few HomePods here in the house. And I'm gonna choose Studio. This way the message is only gonna play here in the room. And let's play it. Pick up the kids. So it's an easy way to get the HomePod to speak something. But I assume this is just Monday through Friday. So one thing we need to do, we're gonna choose the Format Date option and put this actually at the top. I'm gonna to expand this menu. I'm not gonna show the time, so I'm gonna tap None for that. And for the date, we're actually gonna put five E's. This actually gives me just the beginning letter of the day, which is gonna help in the next if statement. This was actually a recommendation from Jeremiah in a comment, so thank you for that. Now let's add an if statement right under that format date, and then we'll say if formatted date, and I'm actually gonna change this to is not S. So as long as the day is not Saturday or Sunday, meaning weekdays, this is going to run. Now let's move our intercom option underneath that, and because today is Friday as I'm filming this video, let's play this and make sure it still works. Pick up the kids. Perfect. Now this is gonna run every weekday, but not on the weekends. Let's call this Audible HomePod Reminder, and this link will be in the description so you can just download the shortcut. And we'll use a little uh, car option there because we need to pick them up. Now that we've created this shortcut, I can go over to my Automations tab. Let's hit the plus button, and we're gonna go with Time of Day. Change this to whatever time of day you need to leave to pick up your kids. We'll just go with 1.23 p.m. for now. I do want this to run every day and then let the if statement take care of whether or not it actually runs on the weekday or weekend. Run immediately and don't notify when run. We'll hit next, new blank automation. And now all we have to do is search for the run shortcut action. I'm gonna use the stock one here and then choose the shortcut that we already created. We'll do the audible HomePod reminder, expand this little menu, don't have to do anything here. Let's run it to make sure the automation works. Pick up the kids. And so we're good to go. Every day at 1.23 p.m. on the weekdays, our home pods are gonna tell us a reminder automatically. The next request was automatically creating an alarm that's eight hours after when you run the shortcut. So for this, we're actually gonna choose the format date action to start the shortcut. And when you tap date in the action, choose the current date option. And if you ever wanna quickly see what that result is gonna be, just play it with that single action. And that's showing me the time that it's going to pass to the next action. Again, I didn't want the date, so I'm gonna put none for that and time as the short. Now we're actually gonna do the adjust date action. Now with adjust date, I can add, I'm gonna specify eight, tap the seconds, and let's do hours to the formatted date. And now let's search for a third action, create alarm. I'll tap add alarm here and create an alarm for I'm gonna tap that time space. I can choose select variable and we'll go with adjusted date and we'll just call it a plain old alarm. Hit done. And now whenever I run this shortcut, it's going to create an alarm for eight hours after the current time for the next day. So if I run this right now, it should create an alarm for 6.28 p.m. Let's run it and let's go to our clock app to make sure. And sure enough, there's our 6.28 p.m. alarm that's already enabled. And link to that shortcut, like all of these, will be in the video description. This would also be a great one to run like when your sleep focus mode is active so you can manually set your focus and know an alarm is automatically set for eight hours later. All right, the next request was this person wanted their Apple TV to turn on whenever someone rings the doorbell. You need to have a HomeKit video doorbell for this. And unfortunately, there's no ring doorbell automation action. We actually have to scroll down to the home automation section here. And so we're gonna create a new home automation. Again, the sensor detects something, there is no doorbell ring sensor. But if you do have a video doorbell cam, especially one that's HomeKit Secure Video, you do have a built-in motion sensor because every HomeKit camera has one built in. So we can choose for motion to be the trigger. We can say when it detects motion, you can specify a time, maybe just during the day. This way your Apple TV is not turning on in the middle of the night because some mosquito flew by. We'll hit next. And now you can choose your Apple TV as the device that's controlled when motion is detected and you can choose to play and that will turn on the Apple TV. 
Now you can actually choose audio to play on the Apple TV, but you just want it to turn on. So we can leave it like this. And you can also choose the turn off command if you want to put the Apple TV back to sleep after say five minutes after motion is detected. I can't share a HomeKit automation like this, but this one's fairly easy to set up. Just look for the motion sensor in the room where your video doorbell camera is saved. All right, this next one is, how can I automatically play music on a HomePod when I arrive home? Well, let's create a new shortcut. We'll call this music when arriving. Now trying to use the built-in music actions might get a little complicated. That's why I would recommend, especially when you're dealing with HomePods, is using the control home action. Then from here, I can choose a HomePod like the one here in my studio. And because it's a home control, I can choose what audio plays. I'll go to choose audio, go from Apple Music. And let's just say we want the uh, Dune 2 soundtrack to play when we arrive home. Very epic arrival. So it's gonna play that audio. You can set repeat or shuffle there. And you can also do the set custom volume. And again, this is why I wanna use that control home action. I'm gonna raise the volume so we can hear the test. I'll go back and that's pretty much done. Now this shortcut will start music playing on the HomePod. Let's test it out. Well, you might hear it in the background, but you can definitely see it here in my control center. It's playing on the HomePods. Now to automate this, we'll leave that shortcut as is. Go to our automations tab and then create a new one for when I arrive. You can choose your current location, but that will change based on when this automation runs. Instead, put in your home address. I'm gonna choose Emily Arena, but this should be your home if you want this to trigger when you arrive home. You can change the radius. So if you find it's not playing quick enough, you can increase the radius and it will detect when you cross that border and automatically run the shortcut. We're gonna do run immediately, hit next, new blank automation. And like before, we're just gonna use the run shortcut action and music when arriving was the one we created and hit done. And now that music will start playing on the HomePod you specified whenever you arrive home. I've had a few people ask about reminders for when they get in their car. Now this person just wanted a reminder on Sundays. So I am gonna create a dedicated shortcut for it. I'm gonna choose the format. Under that format option, I'm gonna hit the time none. And then for date format, I'm gonna do custom. And then under the format, I'm actually gonna do four capital E's because that will actually format the full day of the week, unabbreviated. Now I can add an if action, formatted date is Sunday. So I would put Sunday, but I'm gonna put Friday just so we can make sure it runs. And now we can search for the show notification action. So if it is Friday, let's show a notification. And this person wanted to be reminded to bring their guitar. So if we run this, because it's Friday, that if statement runs and it shows the reminder, bring guitar. Now, if you want it to speak to you instead, just search for the speak text action. I'm gonna delete the formatted date because it auto-filled that. I'll have it speak bring guitar and let's see how that runs. Bring guitar. Now it actually give me an audible reminder to bring the guitar. And you'll see if I change this to Sunday and try to run the shortcut, you won't hear anything because it's only gonna run on the day of the week I specified there. I'm gonna call the shortcut the car reminder. And now let's jump into the automations, hit the plus icon and CarPlay is an option for the automation trigger. When CarPlay connects, we want this to run immediately. Don't notify when run. New blank automation, you know the drill, run shortcut. And let's search for that car reminder shortcut. And now whenever our CarPlay connects, it's gonna check what day of the week it is. And if it's Sunday, speak that reminder. One more shortcut for in the car. This person wanted the Apple News podcast to play if they're connected to CarPlay and it's 8.50 AM. Let's build the shortcut outside the automation. And the first action we're gonna use is actually from the third party app Toolbox Pro. We wanna get the audio output device. I'm gonna put a text block after that because I just think it's easier to do the if statements. And we wanna know what the audio output device is. If we run this shortcut, you'll see the name that it comes up. Right now it's just speaker, but run this when you're actually in your car connected to CarPlay and find out what that word is. Because we wanna add an if statement after that and say if text is, and this might be the name of your car or your CarPlay device. So that's why you need to find out what that is. Go in your car and run it to find out what device it actually specifies. I'm gonna put CarPlay just as a placeholder. I'll still put a link to download this shortcut in the video description, but just remember you need to find out what your device is called first. So if audio output device is CarPlay, now we can use our play podcast action and we can choose Apple News Today. And if you wanted to also only play when it's the weekday, you can add another if statement here where if current date is not, and then starts with the letter S, then it will only play it Monday through Friday. But this person wanted it to run every day at 8.50 a.m. So we're gonna go over to the automations tab, click the plus button, we'll choose time of day, we'll choose 8.50 a.m., run immediately, don't notify when run, and you know the drill. We'll choose the shortcut we just created, the autoplay news, and we're good to go. Next up, someone wanted a shortcut that just tells them how many events they have coming up that day. Well, let's search for the calendar action. We'll choose the find calendar events action. 
and we want to get all calendar events that are in the next one days, meaning today. And you'll see there's actually an auto suggestion for count. If I add that, and you can also just search for count in the actions menu, I'm going to add that plus a speak text action. And this is just going to audibly tell me the count of events when I run it. Four. Now, if you want to customize that a little bit, you could add a text block. We're going to put it in between the count and the speak text. And let's say you have, and then choose the count variable. And now when we run this shortcut, you have four events today. Simple as that. Link to download that shortcut will be in the video description. All right, this next one's a little complicated. This person wanted when they connect to CarPlay to get the address for the next event and automatically get directions to it. So for that, we're going to start with the calendar action again. And we're going to just get one event, and then you can choose which calendars specifically or just get it from all calendars. And we're going to choose today. Now I'm actually going to choose a specific calendar that I know has an address associated with the next event. And if I run that, the event location shows up there. Now I can search for a new action, get directions, and then get driving directions from current location to upcoming event using maps. If I run this shortcut, it's going to jump into the maps app and it will give me the directions. I just have to press go. You will have to press go. There's no way to automatically start turn by turn, but let's automate this that when CarPlay is connected, we want this to run immediately. You know the drill. We'll have our next event directions shortcut run automatically when we connect to CarPlay. And all we have to do is tap go. This next request is pretty cool. They want to put an NFC sticker and you can get ones that are really thin. This is a thicker NFC tag, but we'll just use it for right now. He wants to put it on the back of his Apple MagSafe battery pack or wallet. This way, when he takes it off his phone, he can quickly scan it, mark that location, and then have a running log of everywhere he might have put down his MagSafe battery. I'm going to create a new shortcut here. We'll eventually go to the automation for NFC tag but we want to get current location. And this is a great use case for the third party app called Data Jar, where you can save basically a running list of data and recall it if you'd like. I'm actually going to go to the Data Jar app and create a new jar or bucket. I'm going to call this battery locations. I'm also going to set it as a list here in Data Jar. This way the shortcuts actions can understand it. And now here in the shortcut, I'm going to add the current location to the list. I'm going to add it to the beginning because I want the most recent at top. And then I just have to type in the list I currently created, which is battery location. I'll play the shortcut and I'm going to cover my address, but you'll see it added a new item in data jar with that current address. Now what we can do is go back into the shortcuts app. I'll save that as log battery location, go to automations, hit plus, and we can choose NFC tag as the trigger. I'm going to choose scan. And now you just hold your phone near the NFC tag. Remember it's in the top of the phone there. Let's name this battery sticker. We want this to run immediately when I scan it. You know what to do. New blank automation, run shortcut. Let's search for the one we just created. Log battery location here, and let's hit done. Now let's test it. Let's say I had that sticker on the back of my MagSafe battery pack. I'll just scan the NFC tag, and you'll see it's silently added a second entry to my data jar. And you can also add a second shortcut that gets the latest value. I actually did that with hotel rooms for a pilot who actually requested that. I'll put the link to that video above and in the description. Next, this person wanted to lock their device whenever they open a specific app, but only when they're not home. So let's add a new shortcut here. We're going to start with the get current location and then add an if statement. So I'm actually going to tap current location here in the if statement because then I can choose a different piece of the information. I'm going to choose street and then does not contain. And I would put in part of your home address. You could do the full thing here or maybe just the number and street. I am not at 1234 Main Street, so I'm going to use that as my if. So this is basically saying if my current location does not contain my home address, then I'm going to search for lock and lock screen is actually an action you can put. So now if I'm not home and the shortcut runs, it's just going to lock the screen. Remember, do change this to your home address, but I will still put a link to download this shortcut in the description. I'll call this lock screen went away. And now if we go over to the automations tab, I'm going to hit the plus button. And for this, we're actually going to choose app as the trigger. This person was talking about banking apps specifically. So I'm going to search for the Wells Fargo app. And when Wells Fargo is opened, I want this to run a shortcut immediately. Don't notify when run. New blank automation. There's my lock screen went away shortcut. And let's hit done. Now I am not currently at 1234 Main Street. So if I do open the Wells Fargo app, it should just lock my device. So let's see if it works. I'm going to open the Wells Fargo app, checks my current location. And because I'm not at that address, it immediately locked my device. Pretty cool idea. All right, next, this is a student who wants an alarm to be set an hour and a half before whatever their first class is the next day. So I'm going to hit plus. We do want the find calendar events. We're going to search for calendar and then get upcoming events. 
We're going to get one event, and I'll assume if you have all your classes like in a specific calendar, I would choose your school schedule calendar or however you have those organized. Then we're going to add the get detail of calendar events, and we're going to choose the start date for that event. Now that's going to be the full date, so we do need to add a format date action. Then I can format that start date. I'll expand that, and I'm actually going to choose none for the date format and short for the time format. So if I run this, it's going to get the time of the next event, which would be your next class. Now we're going to search for an adjust action, and you'll see the adjust date here. Then we're going to, instead of add, subtract. And this person wanted 1.5 hours before that start time. So let's do 1.5 hours from that formatted date. And then we're going to add an alarm, and I'm going to select the variable for that adjusted date. Now you saw before the next event in my calendar is 4 p.m. So if I run this shortcut, it should create an alarm for 2.30 p.m. It doesn't really understand the 1.5 hours, so I'm actually going to change this to 90 minutes. Let's run that again. And now you'll see it created an alarm for 2.30 p.m., an hour and a half before the next event in that calendar. Now, if you don't want to have a bunch of alarms just continually added every day, you can choose to delete alarms. And I'm actually going to put that at the very top of the automation. I've not found a way to specify the specific next class alarm, but you can choose to delete asking each time the shortcut runs. So I'm going to run the shortcut and say, which do you want to delete? I'm going to choose that next class alarm, which I had set previously, delete it, and now it'll reset and create an alarm for the next day. If you don't mind having a ton of alarms and you just clean it up once a week, you can remove that first step. Then this can run in an automation with no action from you. So I'll go to the Automations tab. We'll choose Time of Day. Let's go with 11 p.m. We want this to run every day then. Run immediately, no confirmation. We do want it to run daily, which be careful if you have events in that calendar for the weekend, then it will create an alarm for that. New blank automation, run shortcut, and we'll do our add class alarm. Now I'm going to go over to my clock app and delete the class alarm, and let's see if it actually creates it. So you can see it's not there now. I'll run this automation just to test it, go back to the clock app, and you'll see it added that next alarm 90 minutes or an hour and a half before the start time of my next event. All right, next, someone asked for an automation where you can ask your HomePods to find your phone or have your phone make a sound. As a matter of fact, you actually don't need to create a shortcut for this. You can do it just by asking your HomePods by saying, where's my iPhone? Looking for your iPhone. It's nearby. Pinging Steven's iPhone now. And it will automatically ping your iPhone. You'll see that notification up there. And even if your phone is on silent, which mine was, you'll see totally silent, it will still make that sound. So you don't even need a shortcut, just ask your HomePods to do it. All right, the last two were just actually automation triggers I wanted to share with you because they might come in handy. If I go to the Automations tab and hit the plus button, you can actually have an Apple Pay transaction trigger a certain automation. You can choose what card, what category of item. You can even specify merchants where you've purchased something before if you want a notification just specifically for that merchant. Or if you want to add something to a spreadsheet, you can actually include the merchant name and add multiple automations. I'm going to have this run immediately. Don't notify when run. So whenever my Apple Card is tapped, you can do things like add row to a top or bottom of table in numbers, create an entry in a note, add something to a bare note, and more. Appending to a note would be really helpful, especially if you're traveling and you're trying to keep track of expenses for a specific trip. You can append, choose the shortcut input as the information to append, maybe choose a note that you've created specifically for that trip, and then you can just keep track of all the charges automatically in that note. Well, just found out, unfortunately, it doesn't work if you're just doing Apple Pay. It has to be a tap, like an NFC Apple Pay in a store. But I will try it and report back in the next Shortcuts video. And finally, I wanted to show you that you can actually automate email replies with shortcuts. In the Automations tab, click Plus, and then you can choose Email as a trigger. From here, you can actually select a sender. Here, I'm going to choose the email podcast at primarytech.fm. That's my tech podcast with Jason A10. You should totally check it out. And so when that person sends you an email, and you can choose when the subject contains, I'm just going to leave this blank. Choose the mail account you want to reply from. Then you can choose who you're replying to or just any recipient that's sending it to you. Run immediately. And then you can get a notification if you want when this person sends you an email. And you can even choose to send an email back depending on the trigger. I'm just going to put got it to the same recipient. You can also uncheck the show compose sheet, then choose what email address you want to send it from, include CC, BCC, or just save it as a draft. And then it can send an email automatically without you doing anything. Let me go check my email. And there it is. It would automatically send it back to the sender. 
You can also use those mail triggers to maybe keep track of a string of emails or log mails to a spreadsheet or a note, just if you need to refer back to it. So those are 13 shortcuts from your request, amazing suggestions. So keep them coming. Leave comments below this video with shortcuts you're trying to build, or maybe you have a great shortcut that you love. Share that iCloud link down in the comments. We'd love to share those in future videos. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that like button. I'll leave one of the previous shortcuts request videos right up here. And if you're into home automation, I'm gonna post more videos on that. But if you'd like to see a whole tour of my smart home and some of the automations I use, check out this video right here. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.